This is fantastic. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I am uh, super excited. I know more people are coming in right now, so I want to make sure I'm respectful of that. Um, can everyone hear me just by a show of thumbs up? Good. All right. Um, I'm incredibly excited to have all of you joining us here tonight uh, for this uh webinar conversation um, opportunity uh, to hear from Senator Markey on obviously one of the most important issues uh, that face our country and our world right now and is centerpiece of the uh, campaign that uh, Vice President Harris and Governor Walls are running. Um, and so I, I've got a, a bunch of questions um, that folks have sent in that we, we that I've had for a while uh, that I want to ask uh, our good friend Ed Markey, but uh, I just want to introduce him um, uh, now and let him uh, say a few words before we dig right in. Um, but I have to say, you know, Ed Markey has um, service in his blood. It's who he is. It's what he's always wanted to do. It's um, it's a part of his DNA. Uh, and, uh, you know, he has been leading our nation on issues that for too many decades, people uh, weren't paying attention to. And climate is first and foremost on that. Uh, if people had been listening to Ed Markey on climate, when he first started talking about it, um, we wouldn't be in the climate crisis that we're in today. But because of his leadership and those in Congress helping him with things like the Green New Deal and the work that he did with the president, um, we are on a path uh, far better than we were before uh, because of his strong leadership. We all know him as Ed here in Massachusetts. We're thrilled that he's known worldwide as uh, as a climate advocate and fighter for all of us. Um, uh, I am lucky enough also to know him as a friend, and so I'm thrilled uh, to have him here, the man from Malden, uh, our one and only Ed Markey. Senator, take it away. Oh, thank you, Steve. And I'm here in Malden uh, tonight, and uh, so glad to be with you and to be with everybody who has joined us today. And thank you, Steve, for taking the time to focus all of us on the climate issue, because it is ultimately the most pressing issue of our time because we only have to look at our television sets every single day to see that the fate of our planet is at stake on election day. Climate is on the ballot. Uh, the the MAGA-controlled, illegitimate uh, Supreme Court overturned the Chevron Doctrine, which is just another way of saying that it's setting up the Supreme Court to strike down environmental law after environmental law in the years ahead. And what we just saw in Florida and up through North Carolina was two storms, Hurricane Milton, Hurricane Helene. The total damage, $300 billion, $300 billion. The entire defense budget of the United States for a year is $800 billion. So that's 37% of the entire defense budget for our country was consumed by two storms. Uh, and it happened just over two weeks. It's a preview of coming atrocities uh, that will be climate related. So the stakes could not be higher. The planet's running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for planets. We have to engage in preventative uh, action if we're gonna avoid. Uh, the worst, most catastrophic consequences. So there could be nothing more important that we talk about. And I thank you, Steve, and I thank everyone who's joining us tonight uh, for focusing upon this issue. There we go. Sorry, I muted myself so you didn't hear my dog bark. But um, thanks, Senator. Uh, you know, this is, and you said it well, um, uh, this is a, a crisis moment. Um, we, the scientific, and I was going to bring up the storm, so I'm really glad you did, because, you know, we walk outside today and it's almost 80 degrees in late October in Massachusetts. And when I was a kid in late October in Massachusetts, there could have been snow on the ground some days. And so we see it not just in the super storms that we're experiencing, but we see it here every day. And so one of the questions that we got, and and, and I think is more parochial and local to us, but, um, you know, how do you think that this climate crisis is uniquely impacting the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and New England? That's a great question. And again, we're, we're at the heart of the science experiment. Um, we call it Boston Harbor 
uh, but it's the Gulf of Maine. And outside of the Arctic, uh, it's the second fastest warming body of water on the planet. Second fastest. And what's that going to mean? Well, when one of those storms hits us, that warm water is going to supercharge uh, that storm in terms of the damage which it can do to Massachusetts, to New England. We, we dodged Hurricane Sandy, Superstorm Sandy. We dodged it. Just a few additional uh, degrees, and it would have hit us, not New York City and New Jersey. So we're we were very fortunate there, but there's there's a there's a day that's coming, and uh, if we don't do something to drive down emissions, we could see a more than six foot rise in sea level off of our coast in Massachusetts by the end of this uh, century, and that's sunny day flooding from East Boston to Back Bay, um, which we know is going to be absolutely something that's put on steroids if we have a superstorm. I mean, Boston Garden won't just be flooded with the sea of Celtics fans. It's going to be flooded by the sea itself. Uh, Back Bay is just filled in land, and mm -hmm. it will revert to its original personality as a bay. It'll just swallow up the Back Bay. Both sides uh, of the Charles River will just fill up. And what we have to just be honest about it's once again climate's on the ballot kamala harris and tim walls uh want to put in place the protections that we're going to need wind solar all electric vehicles battery storage technologies but donald trump is a climate denier he actually does not want to put anything on the books that could impede the oil gas or coal industry and that's just a recipe for a catastrophe, not just for the United States, but for the entire planet. So I, I was going to move to the things that you and, and President Biden and the Vice President have done and, and Congress have done, because as you, you you were an author of it, the most consequential piece of, of climate legislation in the history of, of this country and the world. Um, but I do, I want to spend, and I can't stand spending time on Donald Trump, but how can you not? Um, his, I mean, his, his words are dangerous, right? Like when, when, when you're a climate denier, he's putting at risk a lot of his supporters. He's putting at risk a huge chunk of our country. Um, and, and what does that say about people in your position and others who have the responsibility and obligation to talk to people about real issues who politicize them and, and, and put them at risk? Can you say anything about that? You know, that's a great question because ultimately, you know, Mar-a-Lago is going to turn into Mara Lagoon down there in Florida. Um, what we just saw in Florida is just a, a preview of coming atrocities, unfortunately, uh, for Florida. But he doesn't care about all of the damage that was just caused to his neighbors down in Florida. He just doesn't care because the, the, of the promise that he made to the oil and gas industry uh, back in April. He put them all in a room and he said, if you give me $1 billion, I'll take all of the climate-related laws off of the books. Uh, and, uh, and that was just that was just pay to play. Right. Uh, while Kamala wants uh, uh, polluters to pay, uh, it's just the opposite of what Trump is, uh, is proposing. And that's why it is so risky uh, coming up here on, um, on Election Day. Uh, it will be catastrophic. Uh, Kamala is a climate champion. Um, she prosecuted and collected billions of dollars from oil companies, corporate polluters as attorney general of the United States. So we can either have a prosecutor or we can have a felon in the White House. I don't think it's a tough choice. Uh, and we just have to make sure that we have uh, Kamala uh, who is there. She actually was the person who broke the tie on the Senate floor for the IRA, which is $1 trillion, $1 trillion in federal money that's going to be spent on uh, renewable energy uh, sources, on, uh, on remediating environmental justice uh, uh, problems all across the country. Um, she's the one who, who, bro who broke the tie uh, to create the climate bank for $20 billion, which Goldman Sachs says is gonna unleash $120 billion worth of uh, 
of, uh, of green energy technology. And by the way, 60% of the money has to go to black and brown and disadvantaged communities across our country. Um, so she will be the greatest you know, climate president. She's from uh, California. She shares our views, our ambitions on these issues. Uh, so when she voted for that bill, uh, she made it possible for the biggest climate bill in the history of the world to pass. Uh, she did it in partnership with Joe Biden. She was just so great on that issue. Uh, and it's creating union jobs, uh, environmental justice, uh, but a dramatic reduction in greenhouse uh, gases as well. And what the Project 2025 a billionaire boys club is trying to do is say we're going to send we're going to send you the billion uh for their oil so hateful racist homophobic misogynistic roadmap to a fascist extremist maga fuel future uh and we just can't allow that to happen they want to make america great again by making america hate again so it's all on the ballot but uh, climate money or money to stop uh, any effort that we would make towards the dealing with the climate um, uh, problem is at the heart of the funding for Donald Trump. And what will happen is clean energy investments will be gone. The Paris Climate Agreement will be gone. The uncapped tax breaks for wind and solar and all electric vehicles, batteries, any technology that reduces greenhouse gases, all gone. The IRA will be DOA next January uh, 20th, if Trump is being sworn in, he won't have a cabinet. He's going to have a cartel uh, that will be serving him. So this is the moment in time. We thank all of you for everything that you are doing. We have two weeks left to go. And I just, again, want to urge you as strongly as I can uh, to uh, do whatever is possible uh, to make sure that we get the voters out all across the country. So, Senator, just like two last things, and then we're going to really um, uh, give folks a call to action. But when you uh, ran again in 2020, you were uh, had a big um, infusion of young voters because, as we've talked about, it's the age of your ideals, the ideas that are that that fuel and energize people because people understand the impact that it has for all of them. Um, and uh, you know how are uh, and they did it because they're passionate about the climate crisis, and and we've seen the impact of Gen Z on elections already, even though it's a very young generation. How do you um, how do you think? they are changing this conversation over time. I mean, we all remember, well, you you were fighting for decades, as I said, Al Gore was fighting for a long time, you know, but but the, these younger generations have helped change the conversation and sort of, I think, helped fueled um, your energy. I mean, your partner in the Green New Deal is AOC. And so yeah, how so, has that helped impact that? And move yeah, along? so I, I introduced the Green New Deal <clears throat> with Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in February of 2019. And what the goal was that we were hoping to achieve was that we would create a movement of young people that would create the momentum that could lead to the moment where we win the election in 2020 and then President Joe Biden signs the IRA, the largest climate bill in history. The moment we would create the momentum to create the movement to create the uh, moment, and it happened. And it was driven by young people, by the Sunrise Movement, because young people have acted bravely and relentlessly in defense, not just of our planet, but their own lives. Right. And because of them, I know that a better world is possible. Uh, and we just have to follow their leadership. Uh, we have to have the courage to follow where they are telling us that we have to go. By the way, they're saying the same thing about abortion. They're saying the same thing about the NRA and guns in schools. They're saying the same thing about the LGBTQ discrimination, transgender discrimination. Young people are leading us. And the Sunrise Movement right now is out there working to uh, contact over 1 million voters by election day to get out the vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. So I think we should be following these young people because they're the ones leading us towards a more livable, just future. And I'm proud to be with them in this fight. And I think all of us know that we have to deliver for this 
Gen Z and the generations coming after them. Well, I, uh, uh, you, as, as, as always, no one could say it better than you on that. Um, so I, I will I'll wrap on this one thing, just to quote and, and, and get your thoughts on it, and then we'll move into uh, to sort of a call to action because we all know it's banner day. It's banner day and the Celtics uh, start at 7.30. So we want to make sure we were respectful uh, of, uh, of everybody's time. But the scientific journal Bioscience uh, issued their 2024 uh, State of the Climate Report. And their opening lines, which I think are so great, are we are on the brink of an irreversible climate disaster. This is a global emergency beyond any doubt. Much of the very fabric of Earth, of life on Earth is imperiled. We are stepping into a critical and unpredictable new phase of the climate crisis. Um, we hear a lot of folks talk about this election being an existential threat to our democracy and, and what's so critically important. Um, what that um, that report and what you've been talking about for so long and leading on for so long tells us not just our democracy at risk, but the entire planet's at risk. And uh, you know, um, I, I want to thank you um, on behalf of my family, on behalf of our party, on behalf of the whole country and the world for your leadership on this, because we know uh, you, you saw way ahead of the game, as you just laid out for us, just on the simple Green New Deal, laying the marker out, saying this is what we need to do to help stem the advances of climate change. Uh, and it led to really aggressive and progressive legislation that's going to help uh, do some real change. So um, I don't know if you have any comment on that um, before we move on to the end, but but I just want to thank you for what you're doing to help. Thank you. And thank you for raising that, Steve, because... Ultimately, there's one thing that separates the Democrats from the Republicans on this issue. We actually believe in science. And that report is scary, but it's accurate in terms of the risk um, that has been posed to the whole world and to our country. And by the way, 25% of all the CO2 up in the atmosphere is red, white, and blue. We put it up there. And who is most vulnerable? Well, it's going to be the people in countries that uh, haven't even industrialized yet. They're going to run the greatest risk. It's the communities uh, in our own country uh, that aren't the wealthiest that are going to be the most vulnerable as well. So we we have just two weeks left to go. We can't agonize. We have to organize. Um, and we have to organize around science. Uh, that's what these kids are asking us for. And by the way, amongst younger people, there's a bipartisan agreement on climate change as a real risk to our country, to our planet, and to their futures. So, um, so all of this is part of who we are as a state. We're not just the Bay State, we're the brain state. Um, we believe in science uh, and we have to make sure that the science is followed. Otherwise, um, this, this summer that we're enjoying this week, of 75, 80 degree days <laughs> here in Boston in the end of October. Really, it's just uh, what our future uh, holds for us. Right now in Massachusetts, we actually have the same weather as Philadelphia in 1970. That's how much it's warmed up uh, over the last 50 years. In fact, our winters are now five degrees warmer than they were in 1970, five degrees warmer. And in another 50 years, we're going to have Baltimore's weather. And unfortunately, the consequences of that are going to be absolutely disastrous uh, yeah. because the storms, the fires, um, the flooding, the harm is absolutely, once again, going to be catastrophic. And, and again, I thank everyone from you know the Democratic State Party. Steve, thank you for everything that you do to lead on these issues and everyone who is on the call, just absolutely great. We have we have a Green New Deal mayor of Boston, Michelle Wu. We have a, 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 a great governor, Amara Healy, who is creating a, a second green monster uh, in the state, but this one is a green energy uh, monster that's gonna be fighting against the fossil fuel industry. Uh, and it's all made possible because of the great people who are on this call this evening. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate it. So you said the other day, and I told you I was going to steal this. You you said when at the Tim Walls event, you said uh, it's going to be not the margin of error, but the margin of effort that decides this election. Uh, and so we got a lot of folks on here who are passionate about climate, passionate about uh, democratic politics. And so I want to talk just for a second to them, if you don't mind, about the margin of effort. 
you know, I know early voting started here last Saturday on the 19th. I've already voted. I hope folks have already voted or have a plan to early vote. Um, those of you on this call, there's a lot of opportunity to um, have your voice heard on this issue and on many others in the next 14 days. Uh, one of the ways uh, is to head up to the second congressional district in Maine. We've got to make sure we secure that electoral college vote for uh, for uh, Vice President Harris. I was up there on Saturday with a lot of, uh, actually a busload of Emerson College students came up uh, and knocked doors, uh, going up to New Hampshire to make sure we secure those uh, four, but also make sure Maggie Goodlander and Chris Pappas go back to the House because we need to make sure Hakeem Jeffries is speaker and not and not just minority leader. We're also doing a lot of buses down to Pennsylvania, so tap into a lot of bus opportunities that I have for us. If you can't do that, there's plenty of phone banking opportunity and text banking. Uh, but from a, a and you'll get an email. Don't feverishly write all this down. Everyone on this call and other Democrats will get this email. But uh, Congresswoman Clark is doing a canvas uh, up this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, up in Nashua. Um, the governor is doing a canvas, um, uh, a couple of them this coming week. I know the senator's been up. I've been up. Senator Warren's been up. The delegate. I mean, they're sick and tired of base stages, except for they love having us up there because when we knock on doors, we get results. We've had more than last weekend alone. Base staters knocked on more than 10,000 doors in, in the state of New Hampshire. It's making a difference. Um, and we want to make sure folks uh, continue to do that. And so... Um, uh, please make sure you early vote so that you can give as much time in what is traditionally GOTV weekend to the efforts. Uh, and, uh, and you know, with that, I'll turn it back to you, Senator. You have always been an internal optimist uh, and continue. You say that Tim Walls is a, is a, is a constant uh, inspiring force, but you have always been Massachusetts uh, eternal optimist when it comes to organizing and politics. So I, I'll, I'll leave it with you to, to sort of bring it home for us. Well, uh, thank you, Steve. And uh, and again, you are a walking, talking antidepressant. You get everybody up and going. And and I just want to repeat what Steve just said. Okay? There are seven states inside of the margin of error, which means it's inside the margin of effort, which means that it's the margin of victory. If we go out and do the work for the final two weeks, including up there in New Hampshire. So one of our goals has to be so many of us go up there and I'm going up again. I've already been up there. I've been in Pennsylvania. I've been in Michigan. But we have to send so many people up there that that uh, New Hampshire sinks six inches over the next two weeks because we're up there ringing the doorbells, getting the vote out. And we can do it all across the country because you have digital skills. Um, there's, uh, uh, there's seven days in a week and there are seven swing states that we can still win. So one a day, figure out what you can do, uh, to make sure that you're putting all the effort that you humanly can, because this is the most important election. Again, it's not exaggeration this time of our lifetime and, uh, and Steve knows that. And Martina, Martina is a one woman wonder. She's like Beyonce, just a one woman, per, you know, one name person. Uh, she knows it. And we want all of you uh, to get out there so that we can look back and say uh, for the history books that we ensured that Donald Trump did not have that second term as president, because we know that the damage he will do to our country, the damage that he will go, that he will actually uh, due to the very notion of a multiracial democracy being possible in the United States uh, will be absolutely so damaging that it will take a generation to recover. So please go out there. Please do the work. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Martina. Thank you to everyone who has helped to organize this great effort. Thanks, Senator. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. This has been recorded. It'll be available um, through the party. We're going to send it out to folks, um, make it available. But uh, folks, again, Senator said it well, 14 days. Let's get out there. Let's leave it all on the field uh, and, and win this thing. So thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll all see right, you along. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. For climate, we got to go green. And for the Boston Celtics, we got to go green. It's a great, it's, it's a great night for us to think about doing both. Sounds good, Senator. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the way.